This is the Extra Point, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast, sponsored by your Phoenix Suns. All right, let's get to it. It's another busy week here in the Valley of the Sports the Valley of the Sun. Mark McLuhan, Julia Lopez here in the Extra Point Podcast Studio. I'm back from vacation. Thanks for um, manning the ship for us here Thanksgiving week. Did I miss anything? Um, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Territorial Cubs, some high yep. school football going on, Suns, Cardinals, yeah. yeah, a little bit of everything. So basically, like, what we probably want to talk about is the Suns and high school football because it just seems like Arizona State and I guess the, the Wildcats ranked 14th in the country, yeah. but um, – when it comes to just football in the valley this year, I think there's there's we're gonna get to the high school football playoffs. We're gonna we're gonna get to this weekend on Arizona's family, and then be like, okay, let's uh, let's get ready for next season. So that's kind of where we're at. I can't believe just how this year has gone with ASU football and Cardinals being so bad in the same season. Um, just not fun. Not fun to cover right now. Well, hopefully it's just like ripping off the Band-Aid, got it done, can start building for the future. Hey, there is a, there's a guest of ours that we like to bring in. Uh, he covers Arizona sports. He lives in North Carolina. I've been trying to get a hold of him. And wait, <laughs> hold on. Here in studio, the one, the only Ralph Amson, who you usually you're just up there in the in the screen. That's right. Um, yeah. But it, you, thank you. So you what in town for the state championship games? In town for the territorial cup? Or did you just wander into town to to see what we're doing? A little bit of everything. Uh, I still all of my family, all of my friends are still uh, here. Uh, all of my work is still here, and so uh, it's good to check in a few times a year. Came out for. Uh, 10 days, you get to see friends, family, do a lot of work meetings that um, I'm, I'm sure you guys have experienced in the age of Zoom. Not everything always gets across. Sometimes you just need to be uh, around people. And um, I, the fact that I got to do this is, I mean, had I just known that I was going to have the opportunity to do extra point, uh, maybe I just want to come down for that. But uh, this is the this is the cherry on the Sunday for sure. It's our first live guest, I think, in the new studio too. So this is a big deal. We need to like make shirts or something like that. I think I'm not deserving of of this. I think I, State 48 needs to make like a Ralph shirt, right? What would you put on that? Would I put on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like a Twitter logo in the <laughs> yes, o, yes. So most people know Ralph's from. rant. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> oh, did you? That's right. You te- you text me about that. I had a little meltdown on PHNX. I, I wouldn't qualify it as a meltdown. I would. Okay. I would qualify that as like, hey, just. There's all the information on my brain, and I connected the dots and realized I'm, I'm not really happy about this. I'm not happy about. I, it. I, was, I was I was fairly unhappy um, when that went down, but I, I now I'm intimidated. I don't, I don't think I should be first live guest. The other thing, um, speak of the devil's podcast. They yeah. every once in a while they put out like their guest list, and you know it's like Jake Plummer's been on ten times, and Jalen Strong's been on twelve times, and Jordan Simone's been on thirteen times, and then I'm, I'm I've been on forty two. <laughs> times and i'm like this is not i i'm not Pat Tillman's number that's good right yeah I, we should stop now <laughs> i let some people pass because i'm i am not deserving of that it's but it is so much fun and i'm a big supporter of az family i love what you do uh, julia you're, you've been an awesome addition and Thank you. and uh, and and brad denny's just a good friend and makes a lot of awesome content and so anything i can ever do with you guys or to support you guys i get really really excited about well, i'm just glad to meet you in person i've only seen you on twitter so finally putting a face to the Little Abby. <laughs> Which is important to do now because I had just broke this morning that Sports Illustrated has been having articles written by AI generated people. So wow. they, they made up entire fake bios, photos, everything. Wow. Uh, so so they, they they you know they weren't um, being up front that it was AI generated content. It, they actually invented the human beings behind it. Uh, and the whole story broke this morning. And so I think uh, uh, as as much in-person content as we can get at this point, just to prove that there aren't robots amongst us. <laughs> right. I promise I'm not a robot. Yes. I believe might it. be in five years, though. <laughs> Maybe three. Oh, my gosh. gosh. If I just keep talking, it will record my voice, and then it can, like, generate me, and then I'm no longer needed here, right? Does I that just go give garden you, with you in North Carolina? You could. There's plenty of space. Yes. Does it give you any anxiety that, like, Skynet, we all grew up watching Terminator, like, Skynet's coming? Does that bother you at all? Can we do anything about it? I mean, I don't know. I mean, yes, but I feel like gardening would come back and everybody's got to eat. So that no? I think that's probably why I didn't, I didn't plant a single seed till I was, like, 35 years old, and now it's my yeah. whole personality. Right. Um, but I will say that I have spent less time advocating for like robot umpires or robot anything <laughs> i use the microwave less i'm like I, i'm not like scared but i'm trying to do my part uh in the same way that we used to you know when we we learned to recycle 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm using less electronics to try to slow down the creeping advance of our robot overlords. <laughs> All right. I'm not using the microwave. Uh, but, you know, I don't think the robots can have the passion that we have for no. local sports, right? I hope not. So that's, I mean, that's why we, we love, you know, reading your content, hearing what you have to say because of your passion for Arizona sports. We're talking about ASU. I'd love to get your opinion on that, but let's just start yeah. with high school football. We have the Open Division Championship this Saturday night on Arizona's Family. Now, it's going to be taped late. you got to go out there live and watch it in person. You can come back and watch it, and we're going to show it nine times, and I think on Christmas Day as well. So when you cool. yeah, yeah, get it in North Carolina, you can watch it again. Um, but we've got a West Side Showdown, and we've got a rematch here. And as much as I want to say, okay, it's a coronation for Liberty, is it? So, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to comp- – what is, what is a proper comparison to it? Is it Duke basketball that's just yeah. always there but never necessarily, like, crossing the finish line to, to win a title? I mean, but they've done it, right? Liberty hasn't done it. They've been there. They were there in 2014. This is a rematch of the, the 2014 5A state final where they lost to Centennial. Um, they did, I believe, they, they won 6A, but that was uh, – um, when the open first started, I believe. And so they, they are considered the best high school football program in the state, but they haven't gotten that crowning achievement, which is the open division championship, which pulls the best eight teams, supposedly the best eight teams out of Arizona high school football. Um, and they've had some close losses, some improbable losses, um, you know, uh, not necessarily choke, but like really good performances on the other side that maybe they weren't anticipating, and uh, and now they finally have the opportunity to to prove that they are um, the the new ki- new kid on the block, the the big dog, right? Like they right. they uh, there was Chandler Unified School District for the longest time. I think in the last twenty years, the top championship has been won by Chandler Unified Schools fourteen times. Wow! In the last twenty years, Jeez. so for Liberty to be here and for a Chandler school to not be here for the first time since twenty fifteen is it's very, very intriguing. Um, and I think there are a lot of people that just say, you know, it's about time. But if Liberty loses to Centennial, they say, like, see, they, they can't get over the hump. And so it's really narrative time for, for Liberty, I think. Well, two years ago, I think this is when you first got here, J-Lo. Liberty had Chandler. They had him yep. in Chandler. I was Chandler. at that game. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was there with my kids. And, I mean, I didn't just there was a – um, couldn't stop him late, kicked it to him, got, and then Chandler, I think, two point conversion won the game, Liberty, and then couldn't get, get it done against Suaro last year on a fourth down. Were you there as well? Yeah. And you've been out there a lot this year. Yes, I have. <laughs> including the first, the first round, the first time these two teams met. So you're feeling, is this, is this, is, is it Liberty, Liberty, Liberty? I think that both teams are very well coached. Obviously, you have two of the best coaches out there. Um, You have Colin Thomas with Liberty, and then you have Richard Taylor, who's been there a long time. And he has a lot of talent on that team. I think they have seven D1 athletes. Which is not typical for Centennial. They don't usually have a lot of D1 kids. They're usually the blue-collar underdogs that over overachieve well i mean has any of his teams had seven d1 kids like not but think about like arizona high school football 10 years ago if i'd have told you a team had seven d1 kids we would have been like wait what like oh. that happened in california not here in arizona you bring this up all the time being yeah. here for the explosion I, I can probably name three kids from from my graduating class in the whole like a richie incognito and nick johnson you know just a handful that actually went on to play d1 now it's regularly over a hundred that are going to the highest levels and uh, that that evolution has been uh, incredible, and a lot of things factor into it, but it has mostly benefited the East Side. Yeah. Uh, and Centennial has been very good. Um, my favorite Centennial fact is it was 12 years of Richard Taylor being the head coach at Centennial before he ever won a playoff game. Wow. It was an exercise in patience, oh, and it wow. really points I- to building a culture over – over the course of a decade, imagine it, imagine anyone getting 12 years without a playoff win at any high school in the state of Arizona. You don't know if the person you're firing is the next Richard Taylor. You don't know. Right. And they, they stuck by him. He's the only coach they've ever had. His son is there, helps with the defense. The culture that they've built, built up, they have people consistently coming back to help out with. John Rincon, one of my favorite players in the history of Centennial, he's back. You know, He plays uh, in Europe, uh, plays football in Europe. He's back on the sideline uh, as they beat Basha. This last weekend, so many athletes are always back and really instilling that it's the team, the team, the team. Um, and just to know that, you know, R- Richard Taylor has had the success that he's had because the school stuck with him and trusted him to do what was in the best interest of those kids 
over a long period of time, I don't know if you can do something like that anymore. And so, um, but you should be pointing to him and saying like, this is it. You, you have to give somebody a long leash to, to, to be about the community, to be about the team. I just don't know if we'll ever see anything like that ever again. I mean, remember all those years where we wanted Centennial to play Hamilton. This is, this is a little before you got here, but this is sort of what started. These were the, the two whole, powerhouses, yes, right? On yes. East versus West. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and we just wanted, it was like these two teams were, yeah, East versus West. They would never play each other. You wanted to see it. They would play sometimes in the you know the first couple games of the season, and I think did we get them maybe in? I mean, I'm trying to think. Chaparral might have might have gotten in there too. We got Chaparral versus Centennial Connor Brewers senior year, and that yeah. was a heck of a game out at State Farm Stadium. Um, but for it to be all West Side, and you got the old guard and Richard Taylor. And then the, the the new kid on the block trying to break through Liberty. This is a, this is a how good is this storyline? I know that you can't you know fairly answer that question, but how much do you enjoy this storyline? I love rivalries. I love it at the high school level. Um, there's just something intoxicating about communities supporting kids a, a, as they grow into adulthood, as they work to achieve something. Something that like there aren't there are no f- football players playing in December that didn't sacrifice something that didn't overcome something that, that the families didn't. And I'm, I'm experiencing this for the first time with a a freshman who is in the middle of a North Carolina state title run. There's like what you have to give up as, as a family to, to get them to practice, to get them the right equipment. You find out they're wearing, wearing a certain color combination that day. And you're, you know, in traffic on the way to Dick's Sporting Goods, just hoping that you get there before they close. I need pink socks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I, I think we're all aware of breast cancer by at this point, but like, I, I, I don't want you to not match. And so, you know, you, you just know that it, it, there's so much investment, uh, and so much on the line and, and just, um, to see parents in the stands, cousins, uncles, neighbors, all coming together to cheer on these kids. At what point in your life are you ever going to have that again, where the community comes together to get behind you, um, to support you in all the work that you put in, um, and then someone across from you is having the exact same experience. And you don't know the value of it until you get much later on in life. And, and the, the, the lessons, you know, people say, like, you know, you know, football is going to you know, raise up these, these young men or softball is going to raise up these young women. You don't, the, those life lessons don't actually trigger until they're in situations where they're facing other adversities, late 20s, early 30s, things like that. So um, the, the, it's just, uh, it's like the penultimate event at the end of the year. Um, and I, I, that's why I love white mountain football. I love that the town's still shut down. Uh, that's why I love that we've seen the emergence of Tucson teams this year. Um, that's been something I've been waiting for, for a really, really long time. You have Canyon del Oro, you have Micah mountain first ever senior class at Micah mountain. And they're playing in a semifinal and developing a little rivalry, um, between Pat Nugent and Dustin peace, who were like, you know, teacher master, uh, or teacher student type relationship. And, and then you have, you have a school out in like Havasu in Mojave that made a semifinal run in the whole state. Um, and, and the cultures of those areas are all represented and they come together. And I love, love, love the East side versus West side rivalry that has started the stuff we do at Arizona varsity. I'm an East side guy. I'm a city of Chandler guy. I'm a Chandler high school attendee. Um, oh, we've, we're going to look for the tape in the, in the library. Right <laughs> there. Yeah, please don't. You find me over on the bench watching <laughs> Terrell Suggs run for like a thousand yards against us after he transferred out, uh, just wide eyed. Oh, um, oh, so he was originally a, one of your teammates at Chandler. Yes. So when I was a freshman, he was a junior. Did you uh, ever try to tackle him? Yes. Yeah. And a blue white. Uh, yeah. He one foot on chest, one foot under, <laughs> under my face mask, literally. <laughs> Ran me over. Uh, a fun Terrell Suggs fact that you won't hear anywhere other than the extra point. He used to be the uh, he used to front a Christian rap group called Submit, and uh, and he also also if you can find the tape, you'll be the hero of thousands of people who remember seeing it, but at this point are convinced that it's one of those Mandela effect things. Terrell Suggs was on a show called Street Smarts and gave one of the all time all time performances 
Um, and, uh, and I'm not sure if it aired on this network or not, but, um, he, he, he was definitely a very large personality even back then, but I was at track practice with him when he informed all of us, he'd be, he said, jumping ship and moving to Hamilton. We used him as fullback. They moved him to halfback <laughs> at Hamilton where he rushed for 2,700 yards and to watch him just drag people like tree trunk size was very, very funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, he was one of the, really the only big athletes at the time. And now it feels like every other school has a Terrell Suggs. No, Noah Carter right. at Centennial is one of the yeah. most fluid, big football athletes. He could be an NFL tight end. He could be NFL defensive end. It's, it's absolutely insane. And then you still, the thing I love, love, love about West side football is some of the, the biggest contributors aren't necessarily the ones that colleges are, are banging down their door to get to. And Navi Bruzon has arguably had one of the best high school football careers we've ever seen. He just doesn't have the ring and he has an opportunity to, to have it be his crowning achievement. He was Arizona Cardinals player of the year as a junior, right? You know, and he's, and he doesn't have all these colleges coming after him, but he will be remembered as long as people remember high school football for what he's been able to accomplish. And I, I love, it's not even little engine that could, it's, you just need the right person to come and believe in you. But when he's out here and he's beaten everybody, he's beaten everybody and beating them bad. What they did to Highland this last week, I've never seen anything like that in an open semifinal. That, that shouldn't be allowed. Should have stopped the count at 20, 26 nothing in the first quarter, right? The stuff that he's doing, I mean, people are going to remember it. Colleges don't think of him as somebody that can come in and, and help, and they should, but the community is going to remember him as, like, the baddest dude on the planet. Right. And I, I love that. I love that, that, uh, that the people that actually go out and watch him, they know his worth. They know what he's doing for that community. They know what a good teammate he is. They know what a good kid he is. Um, and I love that high school football still has that. They still have underdogs, right? We, I, I love the Suns with all my heart. There is no underdog story there. If we don't win, we're, we suck. Right. Like there you, you, it's win or else. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not the case with high school football still is semi pure, <laughs> semi pure. Right. It's not, it's not what it used to be, but it still has enough of that. And I know Mark, I know cause I've heard you light up when you talk about high school football and I know where you're from. I know you feel that way too. And that's why I'm such a big fan of yours because you, you, you look at the landscape of Arizona and the closer it gets to, to what Texas had, like the more you, like the more right. energy it brings you. And I, I, I love that. Well, it, it, it goes with Arizona's story because it, as, as you've seen the Valley grow, you've seen these different communities pop up and you've seen how, what, what, what kind of brings these communities together. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know that I'd heard of Liberty high school. Right. 12 years ago. I don't think and it I, existed. Yeah. What year did it start? I, I keep meaning to look that up. I'm like, I'm like Oh nine or something yeah. like, or 2012 maybe. And just how it's, it's, it's just, you know, a, a powerhouse has sprung up out in the West Valley in the desert. It's just so cool. Very cool. And, and just to, just to see how many people have come out here and what do we do? Well, let's start going to the high school football games. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even Chandler, I mean, I remember calling the Chandler Hamilton game and it was like, can Chandler, it was, it was the ultimate underdog story. And now when Chandler gets beat, it's the same thing as the Suns. You're not, you know, there's no, there's no underdog story. There. I will say though, that Liberty is the underdog. They view themselves as the underdog, even though they are quote unquote, the best team in Arizona, they still view themselves as the underdog because yeah. they haven't won in the open division championship. You yeah. know, they haven't even gotten to the open That's division a championship. That's a great point. So, and I know that Colin Thomas is doing such a good job of like letting them know you haven't done anything yet. Like it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. We lost in the semifinals two years in a row. And I think they're going to be feeding off of those losses and really taking it here. And Liberty has 45 seniors. They have 45 Man. seniors. This is the last time that they're going to all play together. And it's going to be a fun one to watch. And I think that they're going to be uh, bringing it all and leaving say, it all out you there. Think, you think Liberty wins? You think there's any way Centennial rises up and we have like a Another sporting event that was played in Arizona when the New York Giants ended the New England Patriots undefeated season, and you have a, a crazy finish. I I don't know. I don't know honestly. Like with this championship <laughs> experience, matter with Richard Taylor. Like is it, gonna, does yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it does matter. It does matter. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't see it as Giants Patriots. No. I see it as Sun Spurs. And there were a lot of years when we thought the Suns were better than the Spurs, and it didn't matter. It just yeah. never seemed to matter come playoff time. Centennial to Liberty, they are the Spurs. Richard Taylor is Greg Popovich. Uh, you know, it, 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 Noah Carter is Tim Duncan. Like it, it, and and Liberty is going to have to find a way to get over the hump because it doesn't matter if you are better. It doesn't matter how many people believe that you're better. It doesn't matter that you beat them in the regular season finale and you did it convincingly. You have to do it again. Yep. 
and it's going to be so much fun. I love that you guys are televising it, I, 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 and I love that it's going to run on repeat because I, I, I think it's going to be one of those games, uh, the, the Shawshank Redemption of games, where if it's on, you just got to ride it out to the end. Oh, sure. sure. I think it'll probably run on our sports channel all spring as well. <laughs> cool. That's the hope. That's what I've been banging the drum for. Um, so, okay, do we say that Liberty wins this game? I mean, is, I, I, I haven't seen anything that tells me that they're not going to win big. But I'd what, be what shocked. You, yeah. I'd be genuinely shocked, though – I was at the Centennial game. They have a freshman quarterback. His name's Caden Manna. And the swagger that he played with against a bash a team that might have the best quarterback to ever do it. Right. Like At some point, we have to have the conversation about DeMond Williams and his 78% completion percentage, his 35 to 3 touchdown to interception ratio, his four turnovers in the last 26 games his 20 rushing touchdowns from the quarterback position this year, the fact that he was undefeated against Chandler, undefeated against Hamilton, gave Basha the first ever title. Someday we're going to have to have that conversation. Right. Like There's the Brock Purdy's, there's the Connor Brewers that won three yeah. times, yeah. Jacob Conover's that won three times, there's the Brett Hunley's that, that had NFL success. But when you look at DeMond Williams, it's like he – what he did for Basha, what Chris McDonald did for Basha, you know, uh, and Kaden Manna went out there and he looked equally as competent, had an equal amount of swagger through uh, a 61 yard bomb to Hayden Allen at the end of that game that broke Basha's back. And if, if that's the quarterback that we see go up against Liberty, who's in there saying like, why not me? Um, then I, people, people might be surprised. Well, okay. So you were on the sidelines. You, you felt it in the first game. Was there some confidence that was maybe earned in that game from Centennial, even though they lost, but saying we can play with these guys and that manifested itself against Basha. If, if I can recall correctly, I think that Mana was not playing in that game. Right. I think he was hurt in that game. That's so that right. That's is right. a big difference yep. maker yep. come the state championship. Yep. Yep. So okay. this is going to be a completely and different it, offense. It was close, right? Yeah. Okay, and then the, then the, they had the two – who was their tight end? Who's Liberty's tight end? Braylon Gardner. That's right. So he had those two long plays mm-hmm. that kind of broke Centennial's back. And did Centennial have a kick return for a touchdown? That sounds Memory right. serves? I think so, yeah. Okay. So – that could be the difference, the freshman quarterback. That's yeah, pretty crazy. But Liberty's and, defense is so strong, though. Like it, yeah. It's all guys that have been there. They're big, they're strong, they're fast. That's what I'm going to be looking at is their defense. And what was interesting is the only game that Liberty lost this year, it was because the opposing team rushed for 400 yards. They did it in a helter-skelter manner. There were turnovers. Liberty will turn the ball over. They've done it a lot. Um And so I thought the only way to beat Liberty is to do the one thing that was done before, rush for 400 yards. Well, Hamilton came in, and they were like, what if we throw 50 times? And they actually had a lead in the fourth quarter. Now, you knew Highland wasn't going to be able to match that game plan, but if Caden Mana comes in and and they can dink and dunk a little bit, the other thing Hamilton did is they would look over at the sideline for 34 seconds before snapping the ball every time to limit Liberty's possessions because their their pace of play is unlike anything I've ever watched at the high school level in any state any nationally ranked team, nobody plays faster. Nobody, nobody goes in with a, with a better understanding of how the offense is going to run, how it's going to run efficiently, how to, you know, there were some people that were saying, well, what if you just take a bunch of time off the clock? And I'm like, what does that do for Liberty's two play drives where they score every time? It doesn't matter. <laughs> All, you know, they could have 10 minutes time of possession and score 60 points. They're freakish. Right. And so, you know, you, but you do not want their offense to be on the field as much. And so maybe, maybe Centennial can take a little bit from that Hamilton game plan. We'll see. Yeah. And what did they, what did you get earlier this year? You went out to Liberty, what, four times, five times. So you had the, who was the, who was the kid who gave the coach's wife a high five or that was Gardner. Okay. That that was good. At Liberty over under uh, plays the year. Liberty is going to be in there like 10 times. And our plays sure. of the year in Arizona high school football is going to be about 30 minutes long. Might just be the whole Christmas special. Um, Love it. All right. So so we say probably Liberty, probably Liberty. I would say definitely Liberty. Definitely. Yeah. It, they, be, it would yeah. be an enormous disappointment if they didn't. Yeah. They've, they've run the table in Arizona. They were expected to do this last year, and they were hopeful of doing it two years ago. This year, it's no excuses. Any yeah. Anything less than an open championship is going to be a disappointment. Imagine yeah. having that mindset. Only a couple of schools in Arizona think like that. Right. And uh, Centennial is one of them, ironically. But Centennial was 0-3 in the open uh, going into yeah. this season. The open was designed to get the Saguaros and, and, the, and, and the Chandlers and the Centennials out of everybody else's way to let some other people have some success. And, uh, and, and it has... It has worked in in so far as 
those teams have come back down to earth a little bit because every single week's a gauntlet. But you couldn't keep Centennial down for that long, and they're back, and they carry that expectation with them at all times. And it's interesting because in every athletic contest, you have two teams try to convince themselves that they're the underdog while simultaneously beating really good teams by 50 every single week. And so I, I don't see any underdogs here, but I will say it'll be a massive disappointment if Liberty doesn't capitalize on the fact that they are the best, fastest, most well-coached, most efficient, most fun high school football team the state has seen in a long time. All right, so you'll be on the desk on Saturday night either talking upset or talking about a coronation. Um, speaking of the Swaros, I mean, Swaros playing for a, a, a state title in, right. in, in the 6A. Have you been? Have you had a chance? I haven't had a chance to get over there yet. How, how's the feeling about you know not being in the open but you know still being able to potentially hoist a banner against Red Mountain in the early game on Saturday? I think it matters to them because they played the toughest schedule. And I, it's going to sound like I'm, I'm giving like a lot of – um, exaggerated descriptions here, but th- this is the truth. And in, in, in the 12 years that all I've done is pay attention to Arizona high school football. So we played the toughest schedule I've ever seen. Um, and they, they went five and five playing that schedule. They beat an open team in, in ALA Queen Creek. They were competitive at times. They were not competitive at times. So has never been deep for all their run and all their championships. It's been a really strong veneer with a lot of the local kids who play in that district at a very small school that is four a sized, that back them up. Um, It's not like shark's teeth where one falls out and there's just another one right behind it, right? They depend on the 20 kids that transfer in and the one or two kids that are in district that are D1 level to perform at the highest level. They can't, it can't be a gauntlet like it was this year. It can't be a top 10 team every single week, but because they went through that, they are running through the playoffs. They crushed I mean, held at a safe distance, a very good Perry team. You know, they 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 earn their spot here. It is very strange to be see an eight and five team go up against a seven and six team. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. not only have we never seen a five loss champion, we've never seen a six loss champion. And so, um, and then Red Mountain is the Cinderella story. But the truth of the matter is, they also played a very very tough schedule, um, and a lot of people thought that they compete for either the, one of the top seeds or for an, for an open spot. The interesting thing about the open is there are seven teams that got pulled out of 6A. Red Mountain is the 12th seed in the 6A playoffs. So they're technically the 19th best 6A team, and they get the opportunity to take on the mighty Saguaro wow. Wow. for a 6A title. And uh, Kyle Enders is a fantastic coach. This is part of Zach Hill's redemption story at, at Saguaro after being let go at ASU for being involved in um, – uh, activities redacted because we still don't have an NCAA notice. Of it, all- is that part of? The, will that be unredacted on your next rant? Will you know more about that? Since? My hope is that we get the the NCAA uh, notice of allegations, and Arizona State can start to move forward. What was that Please. like what three years? How long June twenty twenty one. June no June yeah. I June can't even two and a half rant years. about it because it makes my my <laughs> eyes hurt. I'm just like how long? Have we, it's like Arizona basketball. What do we? What yeah? I guess we kind of put that one to bed. But it's like why do these right. take so long? Right, and it and it and it's tough because you you watch, I mean uh, Louisville, Jermaine Lole, former Arizona State Sun Devil, they're ten and two. You see Ladarius, Florida, yeah, Florida, Florida State Florida, this week, Florida, Florida State offensive this coordinator. Week. I'm going to rant. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh no, M- Michigan's starting left tackle, uh, Ohio State's se- second running back, um, Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, the leading tackler at USC, the leading uh, receiver for Florida, the leading receiver for Florida State. Um, it's and and Washington's kick returner Daniel Ngata. They're twelve and zero. That would make a pretty good team. You could have a pretty good team <laughs> if you had those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean one or two guys off the top ten teams in the country that all have max two losses? Definitely, definitely would make an excellent team. And they were all here. Not to mention Jaden Daniels, who is potentially oh, going to win the Heisman. You know, and for all of that to fall apart, um, and for the strengths to flow from the same well as the weaknesses, right? Every good thing that ever happened for ASU football is probably because of Antonio Pierce. Every bad thing that happened for ASU football is probably because of Antonio Pierce. And to watch him be the the, the head coach of Las Vegas Raiders, Herm Edwards be on ESPN, uh, seem, seems like everybody's having a good time except for the people that stayed, which are the people that really should be rewarded. You know, the, the meek are supposed to inherit the earth, not everybody else. <laughs> um, is this the low point? Is this Is this something – that you can rebuild here and get with the big. It's, it's hard to know with the Big Twelve. I mean, I, I have no idea what to expect. With the big Twelve. I I think there's going to be some games against small town teams in the middle part of America that the Sun Devils. 
I just typically haven't done well in those games. I mean, I'm thinking about when they went out to Texas Tech and the Baylors and the TCUs. I I think Kenny Dillingham knows how to win a football game. I agree. How 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 close are they to you know getting? I mean, it just seems like with NIL and 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 where they have to go with with, with recruiting and the notice of allegations, it could be a couple more years. What's what's your take on that? Yeah, so the, the way that I look at ASU football right now is, uh, and, I, and I only recently learned this, uh, my wife loves scratch-offs, right? And she likes the crossword puzzle ones, and you can go through the whole, like, 10 minutes of, did I find all the right words and win the cash prize? But apparently, you don't have to do any of that. You can just scratch off the bottom and scan it to see if it won, right? So we have entered the NIL era of college football where you could get a good group of players in a good group of coaches in you could get some people healthy and you can make a run we had tcu go five and seven and then go to the college football playoff and then follow that up with five and seven and so everybody has hope but that hope can go away really quick if you find out in the first couple of uh weeks of the season that you you weren't a winner right like and and i think that's why arizona state probably came in looked at the roster and said we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna remove ourselves from bowl contention before anything ever happens this year I think that Kenny Dillingham has a firm understanding of what needs to be done. I think that he needs to be out here selling the program, selling NIL. I'm driving around Phoenix this week, and it's just like, I mean, we got everything. Everything we could want, we have the potential for. We just have to buy in, um, and we have to pre-buy in, which is one of the things that he talked about, that you're, you're only going to be good if, if people believe first and people invest first. Um, and I, I do think that it's possible. I look at the way that Jed Fish built Arizona. Um, he wasn't allowed to cut players the way that so many coaches are. NCAA rules state that when you get a new coaching staff in, that as long as you keep the player on scholarship at the university, you can move them off your team and replace them. Chip Kelly did it. Kenny Dillingham you know, didn't even really have to do it because so many players had just left and they had open space. Deion Sanders turned his whole roster over, right? Jed Fish wasn't allowed to. The university wouldn't let him. So to go from... Uh, losing 12 straight to 1-11 and 11 in his first year to 9-3 and three probably should have been 11-1. and one. Um, Had a real shot at beating Mississippi State, was one bad play call away from beating USC. For him to do that in two years, um, that's the model, right? You come in, you institute a culture, you have the right coaches, you have the right buy-in, and, and, and you use traditional recruiting and the portal to build a contender. It, it absolutely is possible um, – I know the ASU fans probably hate hearing that University of Arizona is the model right now, but it, it's it's the truth. It's the truth, and and I I believe very 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 strongly in one principle, and that's that losses are lessons, right? Uh, and Arizona State is in need of an education, and you brought up the Big Twelve, and I think the Big Twelve can provide Arizona State and Arizona State fans with an education about what it means to support a college team, right. what it means to be a college town, what it means to ride or die with your team, regardless of success. Um, somebody the other day in the Arizona state spaces that I host on Twitter every Wednesday said, uh, you know, cause you hear front runner all the time and they didn't use the word front runner, which I appreciate cause it offends people. Um, they call this a rally city. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, this Agree? whole, yeah. Yeah. Rally the Valley. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, people are going to show up if you give them something to cheer about, but if not, there's a million other things to do. Why would you? Right. And so the, the big question for Arizona state and for Arizona state fans is, can you take that leap of faith? Can you get invested the way that you should invest in the stock market? Buy low, sell high. Yeah. Right. Can you get invested now? And um, I am. I am all in. I believe in Kenny Dillingham. Uh, he is one of us. He is when I when I say one of us, he's an Arizona State graduate. He's a millennial. Loves high school football. That's he, where he started. <laughs> he he loves high school football. He, he believes that college football's best years are still in front of them. He believes that Arizona State can win. Um, everything that you liked about Todd Graham, you can find in Kenny Dillingham. He believes in accountability. He believes in discipline. Um, he, he believes in the swag, the look good, feel good, play good, which is something Todd Graham doesn't get a lot of credit for. Is He, he, you know, he might have put a clamp on the players' personalities, which they hated, but when they went out on that field, you know, they could wear wild colors, They get, but he, he let them feel themselves out on, out on that field. And, you know, he, he came from that. Dan Lanning came from that. You know, they, they were graduate assistants here together at Arizona State when, when Todd Graham first got here. Um, 
and then everything that you liked about uh, about Herm Edwards, which a lot of the stuff that Herm Edwards said, I I believe to be empty platitudes, but good values when you actually like put a foundation under them. He believes in a lot of those things too, which is funny when he accidentally slipped up and said his version of "you play to win the game" in a, in a in a press conference the other day. Oh, we were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that the other? Uh, I think you said it a couple. Was it was it earlier this season? I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of fun with that one for sure. But it, I I I am a believer in Kenny Dillingham. I but I I do. Think think the Big 12 is going to be a big dose of reality especially for these fans that travel to see the way some of these communities support their team. I was, you know, I was at Chandler Mall which is, you know, a, a, a shell of what it used to be. Not quite Fiesta Mall status, but I was at Chandler Mall earlier today. Walked into walked into Shields Sporting Goods store, never been in one before and a huge wall is painted with Arizona State colors and I was nice. just like, man, it doesn't matter you get 30, 40 miles away from Arizona State, you still find the colors Every it's in the seeds are in people yeah. to uh, in the same way that they would be to rally for the Diamondbacks or, or for the Suns, um, but how do we how do we get people to 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 grow up flowers in the cement? Uh, recruit right? locally. That's what that's what Dillingham needs to yeah. do. Like these guys that are going to Washington, like Noah Carter, he's going right. to Washington. He's going to be right. playing under Kalen DeBoer. He's going to be great over there. But why can't they be here at ASU or get on Elijah Rushing here at ASU? So what did you think of Jed Fish's comments the other day when he said the best players either leave Arizona or go to? He Arizona? said that during Pac-12 like media day two years ago. Really? Like he okay. he said that and he believes in it and um now you're just competing with jed fish you know well, like who's the better recruiter um and that's going to be exciting to watch like with dillingham versus fish like who can actually reel in the big fish you know what i'd do i'd rehire todd graham if i was arizona state seriously has there ever been anybody who's recruit who's, who's raised more money for the university no no i mean I would I, I, in some capacity. I don't know. I don't know if he's chief fundraiser. I don't know if he's number one fan. He's still around here, isn't he? He goes to games. He I goes just, to games. He's sit, sitting up I, in a box with Jordan Simone, both of which were. I'd hire, I'd hire both those guys. I'd get Burko out there. Yeah, well, like that's the Burko, last team that just connected with the Valley. Burko might be in need of uh, in need of work. He's well, the tight ends coach uh, for the Carolina Panthers. They they lost their head coach this morning. So um, unless he unless he gets the interim job, then we're totally in favor of that. Yeah, well, big yeah. time, big time. I, I I'd be out there at Bank of America Stadium every <laughs> single week. But I just I I believe Arizona State can win. I believe that they can build a sustainable program, and I personally believe that Kenny Dillingham is telling the truth when he tells people that he wants this to be the last head coaching job he ever has. Now, coaches lie so much, so much. They are the best at it. They are the world's greatest liars. However, you know, you look at Jonathan Smith, right. who just left Oregon State. He was an Oregon State quarterback. He led Oregon State to prominence as a coach. I, I was Bill, up there when he was a quarterback, yeah. Right. Yeah, they love him up there. They, they do, and he just left for Michigan State, yeah. right? Oregon State has circumstances that Arizona State does not have. Arizona State has long-term sustainability with their partnership with the Big 12. And so I I believe that Kenny Dillingham will be here as long as we have him. I believe that. Um, but, you know, I, I'm also a member of all the Facebook groups, and they've called for him to be fired since week three. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, who else do you want? I mean, seriously, what else do you want? You just got to have patience, though, too. Right. It's just how much patience. How much patience (laughs) do we have to have? A friend of mine uh, says patience takes too long. And (laughs) I think that's how most people feel Uh, that 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 that, that, um, I would be patient, but it takes time. So, you know, uh, Arizona State needs its fans to be ride or die fans that that is that is what it needs and instead of complaining about it instead of feeling like too much is being put on your plate you can say that's not for me and and move on but for for the people that are ready to accept that challenge the time is now and um and you know the, the shadow is going to prove the sunshine on this 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 three and nine season the back-to-back three and nine seasons are going to be the basis and the root of a lot of people's joy when this team does start to win so jump on now. I mean, if you've been a longtime Suns fan, you know that. You know these are the good times. You don't take anything for granted. If you've been a longtime D-backs fan. You did not take this run for granted. Um, and I always feel like anybody who watches the extra point, you're really preaching to the choir. You're really preaching to the choir. There are a lot of really awesome fans out there who do get offended when all they ever hear is you got to support, you got to support, you got to support. And, and you know, they're the horse and animal farm. I'm, I am. I'm working harder. I'm doing everything. But, you know, it, it, it's – it's um. It is going to take. Uh, it's going to take the whole community, and uh, you know who knows if we have that in us. We're going to find out, and I'm I'm very interested to find out. And if Kenny Dillingham fails, I hope he fails spectacularly. 
You know, I, 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 cause I know I, he's going to put his absolute all into this. And when I say that he's one of us, I talk about those Wednesday, uh, um, ASU spaces. He was in them. He would, he would jump in there while he was at Florida state. He would jump in there while he was at Oregon and just listen to the Arizona state fans talk about everything that we need to be who we believe we can be the sleeping giant or however else you want to describe it. He is as invested as anybody ever has been in this process going well. And is he handsomely paid for, for, for that? Yeah. That's that's the market. That's what it is. But um, f- find me somebody who wants Arizona State to win more than Kenny Dillingham. Hire that person. But I don't think there's anybody out there. Uh, and you bring up Todd Graham. I think he I think he feels the same way. And if, if there's some way that he can help out, I, he's already donated a million dollars. You know what more what what more do we want the man to do? But uh, it'd be cool to bring him back into the fold because I know he uh, you know there were so many people that appreciated. Um, how he felt about the Sun Devils without necessarily being a Sun Devil. He's from your neck of the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. So. I, I thought A and M might even go after Todd Graham. I think he'd, you know, that would be probably his dream destination. But maybe this was his dream destination. And he's he's the retired football coach. He wins. He's got yeah. the best. He's got the best job in America. And I, you know, holding Zoomers accountable sounds like the worst job in America. And so, um, you know, would he go back into that situation? Right. I don't even know if I want it, and I'm a parent of four. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. you know, it, to try to tell these kids what to do. It's tough. Right. I and mean, Kenny Dillingham beat UCLA with a swinging gate. So that's I think that's all you need to know. That's all That, that told me all I needed to know uh, about what he could do on a football field. Uh, before you get out of here, we just want to hear all the things you're doing. Give This is your chance to just yeah let everybody know here on the Extra Point uh, where we can find your coverage here of Arizona high school football and what's going on with ASU football and, and gardening tips as well. Yeah. Well, I'm on this really, really cool show. Uh, it's called the Extra Point Podcast. <laughs> um, it's got a brand new studio. Uh, definitely tune in to, to, to azfamily.com, Mark McClune. Uh, all your coverage. It's fantastic. Um, but I, I, I run ArizonaVarsity.com. It's a Rivals affiliate. We cover high school football, high school basketball in the state of Arizona. All your favorites are there. Brett Quintine, Chili, Cody Cameron, Zach Elvira does work with us. Who's your favorite out of all those guys? Though? Out of all those guys, it's yeah. chi- it's Chili. Is, it's, okay, so, okay, yeah. I gotta I be get, honest, I like, I, yeah. he is, um, he, he's the best of the best. He's an incredible human being. Um, you know, he, for anybody who has ever gotten to know him, your life has been uh, immediately made better. But it's funny because from the outside, he's got this like FM DJ personality. People don't really know how to take that. Well, guess what? He was an FM DJ. Like that's <laughs> how he made his name in the state of Arizona. But he loves high school football. He loves education. This is a guy, not a lot of people know this about Chile, but this is a guy with multiple ASU degrees. Um, this is somebody who is like, Frank Cush was like his godparent and he grew up watching football with him. He's deeply in. What? in yes. Yeah. There's a lot about Chile people. Don't know, but he's deeply intertwined, deeply interconnected with the ASU football community, and and all he cares about is that kids have the opportunity to thrive. He's, he really, really pushes education on the kids, um, and he just wants to uh, them to do well. We met about eleven years ago, found out we we have the exact same goals for the kids in the state of Arizona, and that's when we started working together. And so that's like that's my brother, right? And and uh, and and we've been working together every single day since. And, uh, and so, um, I, for anything that I do, I would say, you know, subscribe to Arizona varsity.com or whatever I'm involved in. Cause that means Chili's involved in it, which means it's going to get done right. And I know that he's, you know, he's been here. He's been a guest on speak of the devils. Um, and, uh, and I, so I, I would say that, you know, wh- what does our outlet have, you know, that, that, that other people don't. And I always point to him. He's fantastic. Um, and then other than that, I, I host a, um, a spaces every Wednesday covering um, Arizona State University. And then I work with former NFL tight end uh, George Reister covering the Pac-12. We have a, a show called Pac-12 Apostles um, that we do every single week. And we've done it for four years. He was a tight end at Oregon. Remember watching and, uh, him in person as well. Yeah. Yeah. And he is uh, – he is extra obnoxious this week. Is he? Is, will the show continue despite the Pac-12 not continuing? That's a great question. I think we, it should. That's um, fantastic. To have the Pac-12 apostles and not have a league is is awesome. It would be pretty funny. And yes. uh, I think I think there's been some talk of college football apostles, but like I get tired even thinking of the living on the East Coast. Kickoff times ruin your life. They would just <laughs> ruin your entire life. Yeah. Like no wonder. It's not, it, there's no East Coast bias. There's just sensible human <laughs> beings that go to bed at the right hour. So, 
you know, and uh, when when Jane Daniels wins the Heisman over Bo Nix, you can call it East Coast bias or you can just call it normal bedtimes. Um, <laughs> but the the idea of covering all of college football kind of has me a little bit intimidated. Um, but but he's he's been real good to me, and we've carved down a nice um, a nice space and have a real cool audience. And if if, if they want to go with us, then we'll keep it going. I think you should, and I think you should also keep Pac-12 standings for next year. I think <laughs> you should do like who wins. Yeah, just, in the just, same just, way just that I track ten. all of the ASU people that transferred out. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> be, sorry, I, maybe that's maybe you should do more gardening. I don't know, but hey, uh, we really appreciate you coming in. What a what a joy to have this conversation and. Uh, you're always welcome back here. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to 42 appearances, but let's try. You made my week. Um, and again, Julie, you're such an awesome addition to, to, to AZ Family. This is such a cool show. I've told uh, tell people it's my guilty pleasure. but It, it really is. You cover everything. Um, and that's what I like. I like everything about Arizona sports um, from top to bottom. Uh, and, uh, and, and you guys are knowledgeable and you're excited about it. And the enthusiasm comes through. And I appreciate you. This is The Extra Point, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Sponsored by your Phoenix Suns.